On Holocaust Memorial Day, we put survivors of genocide at the heart of our remembrance. Their life stories are more remarkable than any speech I could offer today. Renata Kresova was five years old when her mother had to put her on her train to leave her native Czechoslovakia. At the last minute, Renata's mother wanted to hold her back, but they had to separate because they were Jewish. This was the last time Renata saw her mother. Renata was on a kinder transport with just a handful of possessions, including leather shoes and ice skates. It was a two day journey from Prague via the Hook of Holland to London's Liverpool Street and then finally to Porth in South Wales. Renata was a little Jewish girl with chicken pox and no English when she met her Welsh family. Her new mum and dad couldn't have their own children and they brought her up as their own. Her first night in the new home, Renata was put to bed with a kiss and a cuddle. And a week after she arrived, it was Renata's birthday and her first ever cake with six candles to blow out. Wales has a long culture of welcoming others and has provided a home for many refugees and survivors of the Holocaust. In 1943, Llanurted Wells in Powys, a tiny town with a huge heart, took in 120 child refugees from the former Czechoslovakia. Just like Renata, they were Jewish refugees, forced to flee their homes and families. As we mark Holocaust Memorial Day today, we remember those who were murdered and persecuted because of who they were. And we also remember those who shone a light in the darkness of the Holocaust and of other genocides. Although we can't meet in person today, we're thankful that we are still able to gather in spirit, united, not only in our desire to remember those who were murdered and honour those who, like Renata, have survived, but also in our need to learn from their experiences and learn from genocide for a better future. Welcome to the Wales National Holocaust Memorial Day service for 2021. Each year, on the 27th of January, we hold a national event at Cardiff City Hall where different organisations and communities from across Wales come together to remember the liberation of Auschwitz and all those who died or who were affected by the Holocaust and subsequent genocides. This year marks the 76th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. And although we are commemorating the occasion differently, owing to the COVID-19 pandemic, it is important that we still mark this anniversary appropriately. So thank you for joining us today from the safety of your home. And I hope today's ceremony will be of comfort and help. Be the light in the darkness is the very apt theme for this year's commemorations. We begin today with the Statement of Commitment, which is read on behalf of us all by the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor of Cardiff, Councillor Rod McCurlick. We recognise that the Holocaust shook the foundations of modern civilization. Its unprecedented character and horror will always hold universal meaning. We believe the Holocaust must have a permanent place in our nation's collective memory. We honour the survivors still with us and reaffirm our shared goals of mutual understanding and justice. We must make sure that future generations understand the causes of the Holocaust and reflect upon its consequences. We vow to remember the victims of Nazi persecution and of all genocide. 
We value the sacrifices of those who have risked their lives to protect or rescue victims as a touchstone of the human capacity for good in the face of evil. We recognize that humanity is still scarred by the belief that race or religion or disability or sexuality makes some people's lives worth less than others. Genocide, anti-Semitism, racism, xenophobia and discrimination still continue. We have a shared responsibility to fight these evils. We pledge to strengthen our efforts to promote education and research about the Holocaust and other genocides. We will do our utmost to make sure that the lessons of such events are fully learned. We will continue to encourage Holocaust remembrance by holding an annual United Kingdom Holocaust Memorial Day. We condemn the evils of prejudice, discrimination and racism. We value a free, tolerant and democratic society. The traditional Hebrew memorial prayer, El Mole Rakamim, will be read in Hebrew by Rabbi Rose from Cardiff United Synagogue. El Mali Rachami Him, Shoyachain and Bam Raimim. Amat Sabin, a Hana, Hoyan Alakana Feha Shahino. The Mahaloyas Kadayashim, Utorim Kazawa Kiamas Him. As Nishma Hoy Sagdayashim. But I am Shahom so, Vishanergo, Vishanishko to Vishanisrafu, Vishanitbu, Vishanifnaku, Al Kido Shashem. For a war shall be neither, I think it's talk about us cause Nishma Yusayam. Beganate and Temenuchas all. Lochain Balarachamim. Yasti rain, we say, sir, no father, no me. Vates roar, but rock, I am as nish, my say, ham. Adonai, who not a lost song. We are no fuba shalom, which go by, say, ham. Van I mar. O God, full of mercy, who dwells on high, grant proper west on the wings of the Divine Presence in the lofty levels of the holy and pure ones who shine like the glow of the firmament. For the souls of all the holy and pure ones who were killed, murdered, slaughtered, burned, drowned and strangled for the sanctification of your name, because without making a vow, I will contribute to charity in remembrance of their souls. May their resting place be in the Garden of Eden. Therefore, may the Master of Mercy shelter them in the shelter of his wings for eternity. And may he bind their souls in the bond of life. The Lord is their heritage. And may they rest in peace on their resting places. And let us respond. Amen. We are fortunate that every year our service has been enhanced by members of the Cardiff County and Vale of Glamorgan Music Service who will now perform for us. Thank you. 
An important part of our annual event are the testimonies from young ambassadors from the Holocaust Education Trust, who have taken part in the Lessons from Auschwitz project. This year, we are joined by young ambassadors from Cardiff who share with us their experiences. Hello, my name is Anwen John, and I am speaking to you today alongside Manon Hammond. We are both sixth form students at Ascal Gevin Gumrai Plas Maur and took part in the Holocaust Educational Trust's Lessons from Auschwitz project in February 2020. As part of the project, we heard the first hand testimony of a Holocaust survivor, visited the site of Auschwitz Birkenau, and upon our return, we were able to share what we learned with our local community. At the orientation seminar, we heard the testimony of survivor Eva Clark BEM. Eva was born in Mauthausen concentration camp in April 1945, four days before the camp was liberated. Her story highlighted an aspect of the Holocaust I had not thought of before, the bravery of people like her mother Anka, who remarkably managed to give birth in such horrific circumstances. Acts of resilience like this were the sparks of light in the vast sea of darkness that was the Holocaust. The visit to Auschwitz-Birkenau was harrowing but compelling. Being present at the sight of such suffering and seeing the rooms filled with the belongings of the victims allowed me to reflect on their personal stories in a way that is not possible simply by reading textbooks. The Holocaust was a truly dark period in our shared history, but through listening to stories like Eva's, visiting the sites and sharing what we have learned with others, we can be the light in the darkness for the future, helping to combat prejudice and racism. As ambassadors for the Holocaust Educational Trust, it is our duty to encourage others to engage in remembering the Holocaust. Manon and I have started to do this by creating a podcast, sharing what we have learned. I feel privileged to be marking Holocaust Memorial Day by sharing my reflections on the Lessons from Auschwitz project. The experience is one I will always be grateful for, and I will continue to participate in the opportunities offered by the Trust in my role as an ambassador and to share what I have learned with my friends, family and community. Roedd yn mynd hynod o ffodus i gael y cyfle i ymweld ag Auschwitz-Birkenau. Wrth gerdded drwy'r giatiau heiarn yn oer fel chwefror, mae hanes yn dod yn fyw mewn ffordd nad sy'n bosib trwy ddarllen llyfr neu drwy eistedd mewn gwers. A dyna pam dwi'n ddiolch gael yr Holocaust Educational Trust am gynnig y cyfle addysgiad o lyma i gymaint o bobl ifanc. Nawr, mae cyfrifoldeb gyda ni fel llisgyn hadon i rannu yr hyn y dysgom ni o'r profiad, efo'n ffrindiau, ein teulu, ein hysgol a'r gymuned leol. Pan ddychwelon ni o'r ymweliad, roedd yn ni ag anwen yn awyddus i rannu ein profiadau, ac felly fi wneithon ni recordio podlediad yn trafod yr hyn a ddysgol ni, a pham ei bod hi'n bwysig i barhau i ddysgu am yr holocaust yn ein cymdeithas ni heddiw. Be recordion i'r podlediad drwy gyfrwng y Gymraeg, gan ein bod ni'n teimlo i bod hi'n bwysig creu adnodd hanesyddol ac addysgiadol y gallai siaradwyr Cymraeg gwrando arno yn eich iaith gyntaf. Es i ymlaen i recordio sawl penod arall o'r podlediad yn trafod cwestiynau a ffynciau hanesyddol amrywiol, ac i'r Holocaust Educational Trust mae'r diolch am hynny mynd. Oherwydd mae syniad Project Next Steps wnaeth o anogi i ddechrau'r podlediad yn y lle cyntaf. Yn anffodus, mae anwybodaeth a cham ymwybyddiaeth ynglyn â'r Holocaust yn dal i fydoli heddiw. Mae hiliaeth yn dal i fod yn broblem fawr hefyd, sy'n hybu ystrydebau newidiol ac anghydraddoldeb. Dyma yw'r tywyllwch heddiw. Ein dyletswydd ni yw bod yn oleini yn y tywyllwch hwn, goleini o addysg a dealltwriaeth. Y ffordd gorau i ni a ddysgu pobl yw i barhau i wrando a rhannu tystiolaeth y rheini na brofi a chylderau'r Holocaust, fel Eva Clark, BEM, fel soniad anwen amdani yng Nghynt. Mae'n rhaid i ni barhau i gofio'r miliynau o ddynion, mynywod a phlant cafodd eu lladd yn ystod y cyfnod, a pharhau i weithio tuag at gymdeithas llawn goleini, a allherio gwrthsymudiaeth a phob math o hiliaeth, trwy wybodaeth, addysg a dealltwriaeth, a thrwy gofio dioddefwyr yr Holocaust. 
remembering the Holocaust and other genocides is central to our commemoration. Every year, we hear the reflections of people who survived and want to share their stories so that they are never forgotten. We will now hear from Janine Weber, who was born in Poland and lost her parents and other family members in the Holocaust. Following the war, Janine came to live in the UK to rebuild her life. Hello. I was born in Eastern Poland in 1932. The Nazis in Lwów, where I lived with my family, my parents and my brother, arrived in 1941. I was just nine. The, immediately the persecution of the Jews started. The first, my father jumped from our second floor balcony onto the first floor balcony to hide away when they were rounding up the Jewish men. We managed to hide in various places under the ward in a hole which my parents dug under the wardrobe in kennels. Then my father got caught and shot and my grandmother as well. Then we were sent to the ghetto. The conditions were atrocious. There was poverty, starvation and people were dying of disease. There were corpses that lying around. My mother became ill with typhus and she died in the ghetto. I was left with my brother two years younger. I was just over nine, he was seven. My uncle found a Polish family, farmers to hide my brother and me. They betrayed us, they brought in a German, an armed German soldier and they killed my brother, but he didn't want to kill me. But they told me to get out. And I eventually managed to find a young man called Edek, who, whose address I was given when I was in the ghetto. He was a friend of my family. He was the caretaker of a convent. Edek was hiding 13 Jews and I was the 14th. We were hiding in a hole. There was no daylight, no fresh air. I stayed in that hole for a year. After a year, my auntie who was with us, she told me I couldn't it's too difficult for a child to live in a hole. She managed to find some false papers and uh, I came out one night. I went to a convent but they thought I was very ill so they didn't want to keep me. I went to Krakow, I found an orphanage but the conditions were not very good. Eventually I was taken in by a priest. Of course nobody knew I was Jewish. When I was with the priest it, Polish uh, couple arrived and he, they wanted to, to have a girl to help them in the house. I asked them if they would take me at, and I was 11 and a half and I became a maid. Of course, they, nobody knew I was Jewish. I was sent to church. When I arrived, I wrote to Edek to give me, to give him my address. Six months after the war, my auntie came she put me in a children's home for Jewish children, but the situation in Poland was very bad after the war. There was still anti-Semitism. So we left for Paris. When we were in Paris, my aunt found an orphanage, a, Jew, a, a Jewish orphanage for children who had lost their family. 
and uh, I went to school. My education is French. My language is French. When I was 24, I decided to go to, to England just for a few months to improve my English. And I met an Englishman and we got married. I have two sons and two grandsons and I love them very much. I think it's very important to remember, to speak what happened during the war, to speak out, to stand up to persecution in order to stop again the, these atrocities to happen. Thank you very much. The First Minister of Wales, the Right Honourable Mark Drakeford, will read a poem by Sylvan Caymans and Rabbi Jack Reamer called We Remember Them. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember them. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. In the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us, as we remember them. The leader of Cardiff Council, Councillor Hugh Thomas, will read in Welsh from Isaiah chapter 2, verses 2 to 5. Darlleniad o lyfr Isaiah Yn y dyddiau diwethaf, bydd mynydd tir ar y glwydd wedi osod yn ben ar y mynyddoedd ac yn uwch na'r bryniau y lifar holl gen hedloedd ato. A daw pobloedd lawer a dweud, dewch, esgynnwn i fynydd yr arglwydd, i deml diw Jacob, bydd yn dysgu i ni ei ffyrdd a byddwn ninnau yn rhodio yn ei lwybrau. Oherwydd o seion y daw'r gyfraith, a gair yr arglwydd o Jerusalem. Barna ef rhwng cen hedloedd, a thori'r ddadl i'r bobloedd lawer, Hirant eu clyddyfaen sychau aradr a'u gwaiw ffyn yn grymanau. Ni chyfyd cenedl gleddyf yn erbyn cenedl ac ni ddysgant rhyfel mwyach. Ti Jacob dewch, rhodiwn yng ngoleini'r arglwydd. On Holocaust Memorial Day, we also remember those who have died or suffered in other genocides. We hear from Salim Kidwai from the Remembering Srebrenica Charity in Wales, who reflects on the Bosnian genocide over 20 years ago. We will also hear from Safet Vukulic, who will tell us of his experiences of living in Bosnia during the war between Bosnian Muslims and Serbs during the 1990s. Over 8,372 men and boys were massacred by Bosnian Serb forces in July 1995. They are more than statistics. They were fathers, brothers, husbands, sons, and the loved ones of those who were left behind. What happened in and around the valleys and hills of Sherbiniska on those fateful summer days was an act of genocide that shamed the world. It happened at our doorsteps. 
we must never ever forget what happened at Srebrenica, right here in Europe. Five decades after the end of the World War II, when the whole world cried, never again, never again. The world failed Bosnian Muslims in their hour of need. It was ethnic cleansing, not on the basis of caste, color, or creed, as no one can tell the difference between a Bosnian or a Serb. But it was based on pure religious hatred. Let us pray for future based simply not on tolerance, but based on respect and acceptance and a genuine desire to live with each other in spite of differences of faith or culture, in a spirit of love, reconciliation, and compassion. We can never change the past, but remembering it, we can together we can change the future. My name is Safet Vukalic and I'm from Bosnia and I have been living in UK since 1993. I was one of the lucky ones to survive the war in, in Bosnia. Uh, we started in uh, 1992 and it lasted all the way to 1995. And it's really difficult to comprehend that that was effectively allowed to happen in the middle of Europe, in the middle of uh, effectively developed world. And um, we just kept uh, watching what was happening around us and people being taken away um, in shortly after um, war started, um, really started in, in April uh, 1992. My uh, people were being taken away uh, around uh, Bosnia and eventually it was, um, war was brought to, to our steps effectively in Prieder where one day, soldiers just came around. Uh, the Republic of Srpska then um, issued a decree. The old Muslims should uh, wear, wear white armbands. What, all non-Serbs, predominantly Muslims in, in Prieder, they, they meant uh, should wear white armbands when outside and should display a white flag on the house, which my dad did display a white flag on the house. And we have really just waited to see what was going on. We couldn't understand that we still had, you know, after considering what happened um, in, in Holocaust and how Jewish people were made to a yellow star, suddenly we had to, in the 90s, in the middle of Europe again, um, were supposed to wear white armbands. And shortly after, a um, few weeks perhaps, after that, um, it, it was turned to my part of town, uh, Soldiers came around with armored vehicles, guns, and just said, all the men come out. And when they said all the men come out, that meant all non-Serbs, non-Orthodox Christians. So in my area, meant Muslims mainly, but also Catholics and Jewish, and there was a Roma community as well. And all the men started walking up the road, and I started walking as well. I was 16 at a time, but my mom um, called me back and said, come back, you're just a child. And I did come back, I went back into the house. And luckily I did, because I did not believe that I would have the strength to survive the concentration camp. I was lucky not to be picked up later. And, um, but my dad, my brother, and all of the neighbors, other uh, men around uh, my streets uh, went and they were taken away initially to local concentration camp, which was used to be a factory uh, called Keratin. They were taken there my dad was then eventually taken to Omoska concentration camp, which was one of the most notorious, if not the most notorious camp in Bosnia. And um, once we got the news that he was taken there, I was certain he was going to die. I was certain that someone wanted him to be go there. Most people that were taken there, he really meant someone either asked for them, they were taken by someone uh, to be abused and killed. And we thought that was going to be it. However, I, I was... We were lucky and my dad was eventually transferred to a third concentration camp called Manicha. My brother was transferred from Keratin to Tenopoli concentration camp. Now, in August 1992, there was a TV crew, um, reporters from UK, Penny Marshall and Ed Vuliami, and there was a few others who have forgotten the names, um, unfortunately, 
but they they were given permission to go and film these camps as the Serbian side was trying to sell it as not concentration camps, but camps for people to, who are seeking safety. Now we knew, certainly my brother uh, did not seek safety in the concentration camp, neither did my dad. But once we saw their report and it was on TV and, and they were showing Tenopoli concentration camp where my brother happened to be. And once they went, they showed the camera in particular, this house, um, which was school, I think used to be. And on the window, I recognized my brother and I was happy he's alive. But it is a concentration camp. There was barbed wire around, there was soldiers patrolling. And this is August 1992, middle of Europe. I just felt, okay, it's horrible. But once the world sees this, the world's going to intervene. The UN is not going to be able to hide anymore. Uh, evidence is clear. But we came to 1995 and the war was still going on. My dad was eventually transferred from the, uh, in December 1992 from my uh, concentration camp uh, with permission from Red Cross, uh, sorry, with permission from uh, um, arrangement by the international community and the Serbian government. They, they agreed to release uh, many prisoners um, and um, they agreed for them to go to Croatia first, but with the agreement was they had to then go to a third country. They were not allowed to stay in Croatia. They were not allowed to go back to Bosnia. They had to go to a third country. My dad came here. Then he worked with Red Cross to get the rest of the family out. So me and my older sister eventually were allowed to leave Priador in 1990, December 1993. My mom had to stay my younger sister. They wouldn't allow them to, to leave at that time. Then eventually Serbian government allowed them to leave in, in June 94. And um, they also came to UK and we've been here. But what then happened in 1995, again, it's something really difficult to understand, is we all watched Srebrenica happen. We all watched UN stand aside whilst the Serbian army walked in and took many, many men, boys, children away, killed them. Many women were taken away, raped, killed. Um, Thousands of people killed in front of the world's eyes, effectively. Um, and we, we thought then, what's the point of UN? UN has to act as the UN. It was created for a reason. Um, after Holocaust, the world said never again. And today, we're still not able to act on that never again. Um, we, we're talking about um, actions of individuals, always praising individuals, and that's great. But we need governments to act. Many individuals saved many lives in Bosnia, strangers, foreigners. But we want governments to step in on time. We want governments to stop these things happening again and again and again. I've, I've been honored and, and privileged enough to work with um, Holocaust Memorial Day Trust for years now and remembering Srebrenica as well. And, and so much work they do with schools who are so willing for their children to learn, the young people to learn. And, and we need to make sure they learn not just about what happened, but how it happened, what led to it, how these things get to, to where they got to and, and how we can prevent these things from, from developing into genocide, what sometimes starts perhaps as few as small incidents and they ignored and then eventually they get worse. Um, and I hope our future is better. I, I hope our future is, is much brighter than what it is uh, today. Um, we've seen how the world got together with, with the virus, how no one looks at uh, doctors or, or scientists or, or chemists or biologists who are involved in developing vaccines. No one thinks about are they Muslim, are they this religion, are they that religion. No, well, everyone wants vaccine. Everyone wants to make sure that we are all well. We, we, we want the whole world to have the vaccine, the whole world to, to live freely and, and, and healthily. But yet when it comes to talking about the wars and, and genocides, suddenly we, we have this inability to act together and, and that must change. And I am hoping that Younger generation will certainly bring the change, but I also would like to see this current uh, uh, government and, and our government in the UK and other governments to actually work together for acting today and tomorrow, not wait for years, for, for many more thousands, hundreds of thousands or millions of people to be killed simply because of who they are. And we must remember Holocaust and all the other subsequent genocides and remind people of what happens when you do not act, what happens when you don't shine a bright light on the, on the, on the truth, and, and just walking away shouldn't be an option for anyone. And 
I, I, that's why I feel it is so important to continue remembering, talking, learning, and acting on these things. And, and we must, must make our future brighter. Thank you. I will now be joined by representatives from organizations and communities affected by the Holocaust to offer their reflections. We bring before God the sin of the world, the mindless destruction of life and the cruelty of the Holocaust. We remember the joy of living that was extinguished in so many cities, towns and villages. We pray that we will have courage to speak up against oppression and speak out for justice and peace. We pray for all who have died. We remember all survivors who live with the daily remembrance of their horrors and suffering. We give thanks for their efforts to rebuild their lives and those of their communities. We pray for those who cannot find peace in their hearts and minds. We pray in thanksgiving for all who have survived and have hope for the future. We ask for forgiveness, for reluctance to become involved, for ignoring the needs of those who call out of sorrow, pain and fear, for thinking of our own comfort and safety above those whose lives are a daily battle with prejudice, discrimination and injustice. We pray for mercy and forgiveness. We pray for fellowship and reconciliation between nations and peoples. We ask God to guide the leaders of the nations in the ways of justice and liberty. We pray for our leaders and our country. We pray for the communities in which we live and work. We ask for God to lead us in ways of friendship and tolerance so that people of all races and creeds may live together in harmony and peace. We pray for our homes and our fellow citizens. Gwyddion dros pawb sy'n gweithio i ail godi gwledydd a bywydau drasiedig. Gwyddion dros ffoderiad a phobl sydd wedi ei dadlu oli a phawb sy'n dioddef yn sgil trychinebau naturiol a'r rhai a greuwyd gan ddyn. Gyfwn nhw'n am i bobl y byd deimlo'n gyflawn ac yn iach er mwyn i deulu dyn adnabod goleini diogelwch a llawenydd. Gwyddion am ddiogelwch a heddwch. Gwyddion am ddiweddu rhyfel. Cofion am genhedloedd a phobl sydd mewn gwrthdrawiadau arfog ar hyn o bryd. Gan weddio am heddwch i fynd. Gweddion y bydd cenedlaethau'r presennol a'r dyfodol yn gwrsefu casineb. Ymdynghedwn i'r sefyll casineb. As we gather in the As we gather today to remember all those who were affected by the Holocaust 76 years ago, and also recall others who have lost their lives and loved ones in atrocities since, let us set aside what divides us and commit ourselves to what unites us so that we may stand as one human family. We now hear again from members of the Cardiff County and Vale of Glamorgan Youth Music Service.
I shall now lead us in the act of commemoration, which will be followed by a minute's silence, to remember all those who have lost their lives or suffered during the Holocaust and other genocides. We light this candle in memory of all people, each known to you by name, who perished as a result of human action. We light it as a sign of our determination to dispel darkness wherever we may find it, and of our commitment to live for the establishment of the kingdom of heaven on earth. When Cardiff hosted the UK National Holocaust Memorial Day, the then National Poet of Wales, Gwyneth Lewis, wrote this pledge. The fight for justice starts and ends with me. Truth is the sound of what I may say. I can only be well when others are free. And right has a price I'm prepared to pay. I refuse to be afraid of force or hatred. I will pull their lives like weeds, plant gardens of more generous seeds. If I turn my back and walk away, who'll ask for others what I want for me? I can only be well when others are free, and right has a price I'm prepared to pay. My vrwyd i'r drostegwch yn dechrau gyda fi, a dyw'r gwir ddim yn bod os na fedra fi ei ddweud. Dydw i ddim yn iach tro fo eraill yn gaeth, mae cyfiawnder yn ddrud, ond gwnaf ei waith. Rwy'n gwrthod ofni casineb a thrais, chwynaf eu celwyddau fel draen a phlannu heilioni yn dlodau cain. Os tro fy yng nghefn, pwy a fyn hawliau i eraill fel y rhai rwy'n ei mwynhau. Dydw i ddim yn iach tro fo eraill yn gaeth, mae cyfiawnder yn ddrud, ond gwnaf eu waith. The Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face to you and give you peace. Your Bawachenu Adonai Vishmarenu, your El Adonai Ponov Elenu Vihunenu, ye saw Adonai Ponov Elenu, Vi Som Lonu Shalom. Boy dear Algloid, Eich Bendithio Akwachod. Boyd i wyneb yr argloif dywyn i anoch a bod yn rasol tiag atoch. Boyd i'r argloif, droi a wyneb tiag atoch a rhoi i chi hedd. Yeah. 